Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here, and today I am really excited to share with you a recipe for Parker House rolls that I know you guys are going to love. Now, we get a lot of questions and comments about breads and rolls, and what are some really great recipes. Well, today, this recipe that I'm gonna share with you is fantastic, and I'm sure you're going to have this recipe a part of any holiday menu. So, really easy to start before we get into all of the other ingredients is what do we need for breads and rolls? Well, we need yeast. Yeast is the main leavening agent in breads and rolls, and today I'm using active dry yeast. Really the only way you're going to know whether or not the yeast is at its full potential for leavening is to start it with a little bit of warm water, which wakes it up. So I have a quarter of a cup of warm water here. It's about 100 to 110 degrees. I'm gonna add this entire packet of active dry dry yeast and a pinch of sugar. And what this is gonna do, the water is going to hydrate the yeast, it's going to waken it up a little bit, that warmth is gonna waken it up, and the sugar is going to act as food. And what should happen in the next five to 10 minutes is this mixture here should get nice and creamy and slightly foamy, and that way you know the yeast is alive and it's going to continue that process of fermentation, which is going to leaven your Parker House rolls. So it's been about five minutes and you can see what I was talking about before for. So this is going to go into the bowl of a stand mixer here and I'm going to add the rest of my ingredients. Now you want to make sure that you scrape all of this out, make sure you get all of that yeast because we need that to really leaven these rolls. And to this I'm going to add a cup of whole milk. Now this is room temperature as well. You don't want anything cold here you guys because it's going to bring the temperature of the yeast down. They're not going to be as lively. So no cold ingredients. Milk goes in. I have seven tablespoons of unsalted butter um, that has been melted and cooled slightly. Three large eggs that I'm going to uh, break up a little bit with the tines of a fork just to mix the whites and the yolks together goes right in. Three tablespoons of sugar, so this is an additional amount of sugar, more than that pinch that we put in with the yeast, and a tablespoon of coarse salt. And one tablespoon of salt might seem like a lot, but this actually makes 32 rolls, so that amount of salt is going to be stretched over 32, so it's plenty. All right, mix this up until it comes together, just for a few seconds. So as this mixture comes together, you want to make sure that you have five cups of all-purpose flour measured out, spooned and leveled. Now you're not necessarily going to use all of this flour. Um, you're going to add this gradually. So my mixture is coming together here nicely, and now I'm going to start adding my flour. And you could do this a half a cup at a time. Um, you might have to reduce the speed slightly. And what you're really looking for is a really sticky and tacky dough. So you don't want to add too much flour. So I'm going to continue adding here. I'll probably stop just short of four and a half cups. And the rest of it you can save to knead the dough slightly. So I have a little bit of flour left here in my bowl. And you can see the dough, it's coming together, but it's still sticking to the sides. And that's really what we're looking for. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase the speed to medium high, and I'm going to knead this dough in the machine with this dough hook attachment for about five minutes to work out the gluten in the flour. And that's gonna create the strength and structure that's needed for these Parker House rolls or any bread and give a really great texture. All right, so our dough looks really great. Um, it's still very sticky and tacky, but it's smooth and it's almost stringy. And I'll show you what, what I'm talking about, this, this stringiness here. So take the dough and you want to remove it from the mixing bowl onto you a floured surface. And I'm just going to finish kneading this by hand. You can feel or you will be able to feel how elastic this dough is. And again, guys, that's because we have kneaded this in the stand mixer for about five minutes and we've really developed the gluten in the flour. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour over the top and then with the bench scraper, since it is so sticky, I'm just gonna bring in the sides of the dough into the center, pushing down ever so slightly. Just shape it into a round and get this into a buttered bowl. Take a piece of plastic wrap that's been sprayed with nonstick cooking spray, or you could even brush it with a little bit of butter, and place this in a warm place 
for about two hours until it doubles in bulk, almost maybe two and a half times its size it should be. I'm just lightly flouring a surface here. Now, you can see how much this dough has risen. I'm just gonna gently remove the plastic wrap here. Now, take the dough and scrape it out onto your floured surface. And now we need to shape the rolls themselves. And this needs to get formed into a 12 by 16 inch rectangle. And then I'm gonna cut them into smaller rectangles because Parker House rolls, um, although they're called rolls, they're actually folded squares of sorts. You'll see what I'm talking about. They're not round and the beauty of a Parker House roll is that we're gonna brush some butter in between uh, the little folded rectangles so that they have a wonderful pocket inside and they're also really buttery and delicious. If you have curved edges here, just pull the dough slightly so that it is squared off on the ends as much as possible because we want each roll to be as uniform as possible. Okay, so this looks good. And now I'm going to cut the rolls. Uh, I need about 32 rectangles. I'm gonna start by cutting these uh, lengthwise. So I'm gonna cut this into four strips. So we're at about 12 inches here. So I'm gonna cut it at six. I'm gonna cut it at nine and three. Now I'm using one of these pizza cutters here, but you could certainly use a pastry wheel. You could even just do this with a knife. And then I'm going to cut crosswise here. I'm gonna cut this into eight sections. So I'm gonna cut here at eight, six, 14, and now we have our little rectangles here. So now what I'm gonna do, I have six tablespoons of unsalted butter that I've melted here and it cooled it again slightly. Um, and you're just going to take half of this butter, brush all of these little squares or rectangles with the butter, and the other half is gonna go on the top, so save that. So this looks pretty good here, and now I'm going to start folding the rolls. So basically, you take each rectangle and you fold it over itself um, on that buttered side, and I'm going to arrange these in my nine by 13 inch baking pan in rows of 12. So you should have four rows of 12. So this looks pretty good here. Now what I'm going to do is brush the top of these with the extra three tablespoons of butter, cover with a piece of plastic wrap that's been sprayed with uh, nonstick cooking spray, or you can butter it as well. And this goes into a warm spot for about 30 minutes until these have doubled in size. They should come to the top of the pan here and really fill out the pan itself. And preheat your oven, by the way, in the meantime to 350 degrees with the rack in the middle of the oven. Because once these are nice and proofed, they need to go right into the oven. So plastic wrap over the top, warm spot for 30 minutes. So it's been 30 minutes. I'm gonna gently remove the plastic wrap here. Now get this right into that 350 degree oven, you guys, and these will bake for about 35 to 40 minutes. They smell great, you guys. So the Parker House Rolls have been baking for about 40 minutes. They've been out of the oven for about five, and I'm just going to brush them with a little bit of softened butter while they're still warm. And this will give the rolls a really nice shiny top. Now, you don't have to do this step, but I think, especially around the holiday season, a little bit of extra butter won't hurt. And while they're nice and shiny on top, if you have a little bit of flaky sea salt, sprinkle that over the top here, you guys, and get these right to the table because Parker House rolls are meant to be enjoyed while they're hot. And I'm going to do just that because I can't really wait to try these. And you can see how light and fluffy, and look at that pocket on the inside. These are really the best, lightest, rolls you will ever make. I encourage you to try this recipe. Don't be fearful, they will not be dense and chewy. And there you go, guys, a kitchen conundrum solved for you. Now, if you have any holiday conundrums, baking conundrums, whatever they might be, always love hearing from you guys. And you know what? Enjoy those Parker House rolls.
Hi guys, as some of you may have noticed, we're getting close to 1 million subscribers. Isn't that amazing? That's awesome. So if you guys like our shows and you want to see more videos like these, make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking here. Or click here to check out more great recipes on MarthaStewart.com.